Hello everyone and welcome back to the workbench for another kit bash type build. Uh, for this one we're going to be doing a G44A gondola. As you can see there's the car we're starting with as well as our prototype photo there. Now these cars, um, these made it, they believe these were picked up by the Penn Central, made it all the way to Conrail. As you can see there's some photos though. Uh, there's the car we're starting with which is a Walther's Mill Gondola and there's a car I have one side I've already completed here so you can kind of see some of the small differences we have to make here. So first things first we got to go ahead and remove our uh, wheel sets and couplers etc. Start pulling this apart so we can start doing some of our major kit bash work here. And like usual, I always like to take and put everything uh, in a, its own bag. That way I can kind of keep everything separate. So as I need it, it's, it's all ready to go, but it's all in its own bag for each individual car. I always put those lids back on the uh, coupler boxes as well too so that way when we paint we do that. Go ahead and pop the underframe off. And we're going to go ahead and remove our um, ladders on the sides because we're actually going to have to remove a rib or two from each side here on the ends of the car. And uh, actually reposition them, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. Just gently prop those off. And Alright, so here's the first part we're going to do here. It's kind of hard to see there, but what we need to do is we need to basically file out this edge here and flatten it down so instead of the transition from the lowest part of the car to the higher part by the trucks being like a one rib section, it's going to be two. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start filing this down and working it down until I get a, a nice even transition. Um, be able to show it here in a second once uh once i get this side down enough i believe i showed that again what it should be looking like but as you can kind of tell on the bottom one it's a very sharp transition on the one it's not bad we're going to keep on filing away There you go, see how it kind of blends into being two, uh, two panels of the car instead of just the single that uh, you start out with. That, that looks like part of the, one of the things you got to do to make this car a little bit more prototypical. There we have that. Not bad, got a little, little extra there. Now I'm kind of showing it a little bit. So now that we did it on both sides of our car there, as you can tell, that that's all squared away. I believe the next will be, yep, we're going to take our chisel blade and we're going to remove the first two ribs on each end. Just be kind of careful to pull those off because I am going to reuse these. I got to kind of flatten them out a little bit. They're kind of hard to, when you, when you uh, chisel, use that chisel blade to bring them off, they get a bit of a curve, so you got to kind of bend them back a little bit. And there goes the second one. So basically we're removing those because on the actual cars, those there's only one rib in that first, will be that first section instead of the two. So I like to go ahead and uh, pull all these off. You can see me bending again. You gotta be real careful with that, you don't wanna break them, but you do wanna try and get them flattened out pretty good. Again, there we go again, pulling off that more ribs. But really, aside from uh, these ribs here and that major section on the bottom, these are very, very, these Walther's 65 foot mill cars are very, very close. That was part of the reason I chose this project because um, one, you could pick up these cars for like 10 to 15 bucks, they're very cheap. And uh, two, there isn't really a whole lot of work to do in these, but you could make them really cool if you put some work into them. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start putting our uh, ribs back here. So I got bent flat, and I'm just going to put it right in between where the original two were at. Now you're going to end up sometimes with um, those being a little bit bent, a little bit twisted, but it is what it is, guys. 
kind of just, you know, keeping this a cheap, simple project. That's what we're going for, but there you go. Instead of having two ribs down there, we used to have one and it's centered. And uh, I'm using some of that, uh, uh, some kind of plastic welder. I think this stuff's from uh, Micromark maybe. Yeah, it's just a plastic glue. All right, next is the cool part of this, where we're gonna take it and we're gonna make sides for our car here. So all this is is very thin sheet styrene. As you can see, I'm taking and I'm making marks in the back side of it with the X-Acto knife using the pointed part as well as the other part. And what that does is it gives you these little like indentations and spots that are popped out a little bit. And um, that's what will give the car a look like the sides are all bowed out and used up on it. You just take and glue it in place. But um, as far as like cutting these sides and stuff, it's very simple to do them. You just kind of get them close and just keep trimming them down until they fit. And then these end ladders, I end up pulling the little nibs off. You could re-drill them if you want to. I personally just pull them off and glue the ladder on because kind of not going to matter. Also like to file down the edges a little bit to try and get the transmission smooth from the piece of styrene to the side of the car. It's easier to do that when the ladder's not on there. So also um, file the ends of the ribs because that's the prototype car has it like that. So we'll go ahead and glue our ladder back in here. And there you go, there's the first panel done. So now we just have to do the same process all the way down the side of the car where I'm basically just going to be test fitting uh, and then doing, as you guys can tell, just doing a whole bunch of little indentations and marks and such on the side of the car to, to give these panels a little bit of character. It's not showing up too well because of the lighting and, you know, uh, the fact that it's white styrene and the way the lighting is, it's kind of hard to see, but... It just kind of looks neat with the panels being bowed out like this. This was a technique I picked up from somebody here on YouTube. I can't remember who exactly it was, but so you put your panel on and go ahead and just file the edge just to kind of flatten it out a little bit. And then file the rib as well down the side. And see, so you got to trim this panel down a little bit. That's a lot of this is just trying to get these panels to fit right I've, I've tried cutting them out I generally what I do is I try to cut a bunch of them out close and then I'll come back and I'll trim each one as needed to fit the side of the car and again just you know doing a little indents a little bit of notching and stuff on the side there boom it's in there trim this edge off we'll come in and we'll file again smoothing that down All right, so there it is with the whole side of the car done. I'm not gonna sit through the whole thing and doing the whole side like that. Now, as you can see here, I did get to a point where I decided just to go ahead and do all these side panels and then I'd come back and start trimming some of these the other way. That way the glue had some time to dry. Then come in, trim it a little bit, and then we file. We file and we file. And we go ahead and we uh, file our ribs down as well. Now on the actual car, the ribs were a little bit higher up than the very bottom of the car, so this is a bit of a compromise to have them filed and have them right at the bottom, but um, just trying to keep this project simple and not get too carried away with things. This is, you know, this is a pretty neat car when it's done, so I don't need to overdo it with things. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our underframe back on. When I was pulling the wheel sets off originally, they were hanging up on those little, um, those little overhang pieces there on the bottom of the frame and I like to just cut those off so that way the wheels will just sit on there and they won't be moving around too much but either way I've got uh, a set of dummy trucks here as I call them for painting these are just old plastic wheels and junk wheel uh, trucks that I use for whenever I'm painting something so I just throw those on there uh, just to keep the, the good factory stuff from getting all beat up. There's about where we're at. Now it's time for some paint. And 
for this car, um, we're going to do something pretty cool with. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do some Penn Central Green on this one. Um, so, whenever I paint a car like this, I always like to start from the bottom. Pretty much start with it turned over for a few reasons, but mainly because I want to get as good a coverage as I can. So, I start painting the bottom side first and get all the things from the bottom angle, and then I'll flip it over and paint the top side. It also helps doing it this way because you could pick up the car by the wheel sets and trucks and it gives you a good place to pick up at to be able to move the car. And here we go again getting some of the top. I'm not going to worry about painting the interior too much because that's going to get all uh, that's going to get airbrushed or rust color anyway so just whatever overspray gets on it gets on it but you can also kind of see here as we're looking at it from the sides all those in all those dents in the side panels and everything and all that neat stuff too as we put the paint on here they, they, they came out pretty cool um, I am doing four different cars at the time I'm doing this video which will be all shown in the uh, next part at the end uh, this is just part one here so I hope you all will tune in for part two which will be all of the uh, further painting, decaling, and weathering of this car as well as some run-bys with it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching.